folks, we're back to uh, doing the 125 again. So we've done the uh, oil, the compression test, the valves, and we've cleaned out the filter. In this episode, I'm going to be doing the exhaust system. Okay. Now, it's, I have painted it once before. It's a little bit on the rusty side, so I need to paint it again. So this lot needs to come off. Now, what people sort of think about exhaust systems, um, if you, I don't know if you're able to actually... Uh, see with this camera here people automatically think okay let's just remove this exhaust system here uh this is not working this camera so we'll buy that okay so you've got the exhaust system here uh so people think okay well let's fill this uh muffler down the end here we'll just chop it off and then we'll put a bigger muffler on it and it goes faster right wrong so it, it, it doesn't happen and then people think well hey man you need some back pressure so what people this is one theory. That the theory is that you're supposed to have some back pressure to make the actual um, engine run better. Now, that's theory one that I've been researching on the internet. Theory two says you don't need any back pressure at all. And what you need is, is the pipe it has to be of a certain length and a certain diameter. Because what happens is as the engine piston goes up and down, it sort of pulsates. And that pulsation causes a thing called scavenging. So it's like high pressure, low pressure, high pressure, low pressure. And that low pressure evacuates the piston chamber. So it's it's clean and it works to its best ability. So, I mean, there are some equations on the internet to uh, uh, get the right length and the right diameter of exhaust system. Now, what the uh, plan is, and obviously not today because I'm doing this over a series of days, take this off, clean it up, and then I'll be doing what's called a back pressure test because some mechanics have, have heard say well I remember a friend of mine years ago had a Morris Minor and she um, had a hole in the exhaust and then she uh, got it uh, fixed and she said to her fiance well, the, the economy is better why is that said, you know an exhaust system you have to think of this as a musical instrument what I'm going to do I'm going to take one of these screws out drill a hole into the exhaust and then connect it up to one of these it's called a vacuum gauge. Okay, so vacuum gauge in like so. Just to test the back pressure. Now, back pressure, usually mechanics look for something under 1 psi. If it's under 1 psi, then I'm happy. I don't need to make any uh, adjustments. This thing has got a big leak on it, so I'm going to be sort of taking it apart and fixing it and so forth. So it'll be an opportunity to um, get things sorted. One of the studs is missing, so I'll need to sort of get my welder out and uh, start playing around with that. Um, and so remove remove the rust, get some rust removal gel, or maybe some something like uh, vinegar. Okay, well let's get started and start doing stuff. Stop the music. The, yeah, I had a problem with this thing, as you know. So, if you want to see how I cleared the rust off this, go back to my uh, previous video. I'll put a link to it down below about uh, electrolysis, and uh, it will show you how I removed the rust and I got it all cleaned up. I tried all the other methods were not, so not as successful. Um, yes, I've got a new sort of microphone set up here. I'm hoping to get a better audio for videos and uh, <clears throat> and for uh, vlogging. Now, I've painted this uh, pipe, <clears throat> this cleaned up pipe and this stuff, which is very high temperature paint from Halfords, matte black. Not, not any particular reason why I chose matte black, just uh, that's the previous colour of the pipe. Um, now, back pressure testing. Okay, now normally, in modern cars, you would remove this sensor here. I'll just move the sound recorder out of the way. This sensor here, which is called an oxygen sensor. You'd remove that. This is a, it's one that's, that's going on the rover. It's because uh, the, the one on the rover's gone. You would remove that, unbolt it, bolt it an adapter, connect your vacuum gauge up to it. 
but when like the motorbike and other older cars um, you don't have electronic fuel injection you have a carburetor so to get around this what they used to do was they'd drill a hole in the exhaust pipe near enough to the engine and they would either spot weld it afterwards or they'd put a self-tapping screw in it or if you're a rat bike enthusiast you put a, a jubilee clip with a tin a bit of tin can over it but the method I've chosen to do is because this, this exhaust pipe has a heat shield held on by two screws as I said earlier in the video remove one of the screws and drill a hole now if we take a closer look oops, sorry about jerking you there guys take a closer look here you'll notice that they've put this um, threaded sort of nut thing on I just tacked it on both sides which means if we rotate it there as you can see there's a bit of a gap so it's not very good for uh, for a back pressure test so what I've done over on this one up here is I've welded all the way round with my uh, arc welder I'm very surprised that my arc welder worked if I rem so and then so it's welded all the way around remove the screw I don't know if you can see, but I've drilled a hole into the exhaust pipe. Obviously with a, a drill bit smaller than the threads. So I can hook my back pressure test, hook my vacuum gauge up to that, and do a back pressure test. So next we'll get this back on the bike and do a back pressure test. So let's cue the music. Just nice and tight. Good. Okay, so with I'll just move the microphone there. Okay, so with, everything's all done. I've uh, repainted the, the 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 silencer. Now you did notice probably there was a bit of patch of grey here. Well, after I welded it, what happened 
So I'm playing around with the mic here. What happened was there were still a few little bit of holes in here. So then I ended up having to put on this stuff. Which I'll just show you for camera purposes. There's a bit of exhaust putty, which you probably saw me knock off um, to weld it. So it's all bits of weld. And the arc weld didn't really work too well on this. I think I could have done with a MIG welder, actually, which I don't have. So I just cleaned it up and put a bit of exhaust putty in. So that's what I used. Um, and then I carried on painting it up with this uh, this stuff, which is a very high temperature paint. So it's all done, all complete. Okay, and I had a bit of problem actually recording this. It's been a, been a long time. I've been doing other projects as well around the home and stuff and bits and pieces. Now this stud here, you probably see me grind it off and put one in. I did have uh, one where I actually drilled and tapped it, but the GoPro didn't, uh, well it did record it, but I tried to put it onto the computer and it just... Oh. Filming disaster after filming disaster. Anyway, so <clears throat> it's all done complete. Now the back pressure test, the back pressure test which I did down here. Um, I just grab a screwdriver because I've got the pot panel on. Back pressure test. Yes, it was less than one psi, so that's why I didn't do much to the uh, silencer. Less than one psi, and uh, I just basically left it as is. Now, when I revved it, it went above that one psi, so it's probably all right. Won't cause much of a problem. Um, so yeah. Too much of a difficulty <clears throat> so i'm going to leave it as is and yes uh if i'm going to do something to this silence i might put it straight through or whatever i'm not going to do it now because i want to change the jets at the same time because when you change anything you obviously need to reject the carburetor and stuff so next i'll be on the other side dealing with um, the ignition system i'll also be dealing with the carburetor cleaning it out still got that fuel problem with the carburetor so I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that. Um, what else? Yeah, so getting this back together. Home to get some motor vlogs done. I haven't been putting a video up because I've been very busy. Obviously, um, I did have trouble with this, and you saw in the ele electrolysis video. Um, so, yes, I've got my 40th birthday coming up. So that that's something that... Uh, my, my wife wants to sort of, you know, sort of see it out with a good, good celebration. So, I've got things to look forward to for that. And yes, yeah, so I've also, as you probably will see behind my motorbike here, got this, which is a uh, a free shed, uh, brilliant free shed because <clears throat> it's going to contain this. Uh, motorbike eventually so and i'll be able to it's quite a big shed i can i can actually stand up in it it was going free so we're get, going concern going concern well housing a motorbike is a going concern well you might not think so but i do <laughs> <laughs> and i'll be able to use it as a kind of like a little studio so any other tutorials i can put a little workbench in and actually film in that so <clears throat> that's the news is coming up with that um yeah so hopefully we get on with some more motor vlogs i've got head exploding with video ideas so really you know looking forward to that and get the screw in place yep not that. whoops I'm knocking you guys off center that's no good <laughs> okay just tighten you down i've got a tripod as well which i picked up from uh a car boot sale and it's it's absolutely brilliant you know i can instead of propping it up on bricks and and so forth i can actually prop this thing up on the a tripod and they're nice and stable make of a video so that's kind of what's been happening i've also got also want to do a bit of drive train as well so it's more videos to look forward to um yeah so that's it 
I hope you enjoyed it. Please rate, comment, subscribe. Um, 